Hi guys, uh, I'm Ollie with Esports News UK and we're Insomnia 69. Um, thanks to ESI London and Aegon uh, by AFC for helping us get here. Uh, my name is Neil Newborn. I'm an actor. I'm also a performance director and a producer. I do stunts, I do creature work, most mainly for performance capture and motion capture and voiceover in computer games and animation. I also do TV and film as well as an actor. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So tell us, why are you here at Insomnia this weekend? Um, here at Insomnia, I'm very grateful to be invited by Insomnia to come and talk with um, We Claire, who's a presenter who's going to be on the main stage, uh, to talk about games and the work that I've been involved in. And also, if people are interested, which a lot of people are becoming more and more interested in, not only games, but also the performance capture side of things, to sort of talk about the behind the scenes and how it works. And, and if people are interested, also how they can get involved in it. Oh, that's amazing. Um, I hear you have uh, your own company that helps uh, yeah. people, I guess, get into the mocap industry. Yeah, sure. That's right. It's um, Performance Captured is my company. Mm -hmm. We have two sides of it. One is a, a workshop based. Um, it's not an academy. We call it an academy, but it's yeah. not an academy. It's a series of workshops that are designed to help performers from all backgrounds and disciplines like dancers, puppeteers, gymnasts, martial artists, actors, directors even game developers, to come into the suit, jump into the suit and work practically for about 20 hours in the volume and experience everything that you can do in performance capture and mocap um, to be able to aid them better in either starting in the industry or if they've done a few games, you know, just progress in, in a safe environment where they can just make mistakes and try things. Um, or if they're just curious about it, want to start exploring that as a part of their um of their career. It's not a prerequisite. You don't need to necessarily train in motion capture to yeah. get into it. We find it really helps people demystify it because there's no secrets, it's, it's a technical skill. Uh, but it is also an, a new acting methodology, I believe. Mm -hmm. So we promote that idea and we teach people if they want to you know, uh, come to us, yeah. it's great. And the other side, I have a production company. We've just done our, we're doing our 10th shoot um, next week actually, which I can't talk about, but it's with a very, very big games company, AAA game. And um, we we are a production company. I'm a producer, but I also do performance directing as well. That's amazing. Yeah, it's really fun. Uh, yeah, uh, I was going to ask about like so because you've been in um, the motion capture industry for a while now. About twelve years. Twelve years. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Mm. Um, firstly, I was going to ask because with it evolving, um, mm -hmm. especially exponentially recently, yeah. How has that impacted your, um, I guess, career, your work, and all that? Oh, it's been wonderful. I mean, I started back in the day, twelve years ago. Mm -hmm. There was probably only about a dozen people doing motion capture yeah. as performers in most, in probably the whole of the UK. Actually, mm -hmm. I don't think that's an exaggeration as well. I think that's yeah. pretty accurate. Give or take some people that would come in and out. Mm -hmm. uh, there was about uh, about a dozen of us that were regular performers. And at that time, no actor really wanted to touch it. So I was telling people about it and people were like, oh, no, we shouldn't really do that. Because they didn't see the art endeavor. They didn't see that it was an artistic form. They didn't really think it was acting. Yeah. And as we, luckily, those of us involved in it saw the future of where it was going to go. And regularly with the studios who are amazing. Actually, I should say Audio Motion gave me my very first gig. Oh. Uh, Brian, I have a lot to thank for, um, Brian Mitchell particularly to thank for, uh, for giving me the, the chance and taking me under his wing and helping me and all the people that I was working with and the other people that were already doing mocap before taught me a lot and helped me uh, progress through. And I was thankfully smart enough to see where this was going. Yeah. And I knew that the every year, every iteration, every generation of software and hardware, the fidelity of, of performance will get clearer and more detailed and more nuanced. The other great thing about it is it allowed me to, um, I'm a character actor, yeah. but I have a very strong look. So in TV and film, sometimes that can go against you because people can see you only really as a few things sometimes. You know, yeah. It's type, called typecasting. It's quite fair, but it's difficult because if you want to take your face off, you can't. Whereas in performance capture, your face isn't the most important part of what you look like because yeah. you can look like anything, as long as it's appropriate to your ethnic background casting type. That's For instance, I should never play an African-American, it's not appropriate. But anything within what I can look like is completely fair game. And it allowed me to play any character. I've played so many different types of characters uh, in so many different games now. It really helped me as an actor develop my craft. Um, and it really just gave me a huge amount of fulfillment to get to play all these wonderful different roles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, um, I'm a bit I, husky today, man. <laughs> I'm 10% sexier than I was yesterday. Oh. Morning, but I've been traveling. I think I'm 10% sexier than I was. It was a little husky. <laughs> so but anyway, I'm You're doing been traveling great. a lot, man. So you have to forgive the husky. Nah, don't even worry about <laughs> it. Uh, you mentioned about being in like television and film. Yeah. Um, from what I've heard, you've been in television since like the 90s, basically, and worked. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. 
Yeah, the noughties. I'm not that old. <laughs> no, uh, but I, You've I, been I, in TV forever. You're no, so but, uh, old. I, I believe your first, um, <laughs> your first, my first TV role was in the nineties. Yeah, uh, I'm I just fucking was, with you, man. I just believe it was Criss Cross, right? <laughs> Sorry, it was Criss. Yeah, Cross. it was Criss Cross, which yeah. was a, a little-known American TV show, and it was my first ever role. I was only like 15 or something like that. 14, I think it was, man, something like that. And I and I I played an American, so. Um, I was still at school and it was just like a really, it was actually I have Central Television Workshop, which still exists in Nottingham now, mm -hmm. but used to be Birmingham, Nottingham. And uh, they were amazing. They were such a great uh, resource for kids to get involved in acting. Yeah. And through that, I got um, I got this role, this like this guest lead, well, not even a lead, it was a guest spot on a American TV series um, that was shooting in Britain. And so it was really cool. I got to, I only had like one scene, <laughs> like three or four lines. And I, I had to turn up and be some douchebag boyfriend <laughs> and that was it. But it was great because they called me at the beginning of the day and I was just fast, I was hooked. Mm. I spent the entire day waiting for my scene, which was it ended up being the very last scene of the day. But what it gave me was this wonderment about film sets and I fell instantly in love with it. It's the first time I've ever been on a film set and or a TV set, sorry. And I just, I was hooked. I just stayed in the seat watching everything for about eight hours. It was amazing. And because of that, I realized that, although I'd, I'd already started doing like amateur stuff at school and reading plays and poetry and that kind of shit, it basically cemented in me, that's what I was gonna do with my life. Mm. Yeah, become an actor. Yeah. I mean, so what was that turning point from like- Colin Edwards, I have to thank for that as well. Okay. He was the leader of um, Birmingham uh, Central Television Workshop. Oh yeah, because yeah. you, think, you yeah. grew up around here, right? I'm a brewing mate. Yeah. yeah, although I, 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 my accent went when I was about eight. <laughs> so I, I did, my, my twin brother, I have a twin, he's a cameraman. Mm -hmm. um, so he won't mind me saying this, but um, he's, he's a proper brummy. Oh, Whereas really? For me, it was just, I don't know, it wasn't really, didn't really fit me very well. Oh. So I changed my accent when I was eight, yeah. Uh, anyway, so I was gonna ask you, like, what was that, so from film and television, what was that turning point to go into like video games? I was broke. Oh. I was deeply broke. Yeah, I was very broke. And I was doing some really cool, fun indie projects and acting, and it was great and wonderful and blah, blah, blah. I just couldn't pay my bills. So um, I, I am a gamer. I've been a gamer since I was like eight. Years <laughs> <laughs> or so of gaming. Um, so, <laughs> so uh, but since I was a kid, um, uh, I fell in love with games. And during this period, which was wonderfully creative and, and really, really bad in financially. Um, I saw an article in PC Gamer, I think it was, about voiceover work in games. I was like, oh, I should get involved in that. I have a good malleable voice. I can do a, a good, you know, I have a good acting craft and a good range of accents. I should do that. And in the corner of this, this page, there was a tiny picture, literally it was like a picture like that, in the corner of the article about motion capture. And I was like, what the fuck is that? And I literally, my, I just went, what, what is that? For me, it looked immediately like television and film had uh, met theatre and had a baby. It was like <laughs> this weird mishmash of all of it. Just from the picture, I thought, I, I understand that. I think I understand exactly how that, not technically, obviously, mm, yeah. but I understood the premise of what it was. And then it was uh, audio motion. So I got immediately, literally that day, I think, I got in touch with, Audio Motion said, listen, I want to send you my stuff. I'm an actor. I don't know if you need actors or specialists, whatever, but I have a huge range of different skill sets from weapon work, gun work, martial arts, some basic gymnastics stuff, tumbling. Um, you know, I can do all of that stuff. I, I think I'm a good fit for, for being doing this work. Can you take a chance on me or give me an audition or something? So they wrote back like really quickly and they said, yeah, we've got this project coming up. We'd like to audition you. And Stacey Boisel, um was helming that um, particular audition. And uh, yeah, they 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 cast me in uh, Ubisoft's um, Ghost Recon Future Soldier, yeah. um, playing 30K, which was really cool. He's a mad madman. <laughs> so I got to do two and a half weeks of filming with them, and that was my first job in motion capture. And then uh, just kind of spiraled out there. Yeah, I was super lucky that um, I recognized the opportunity. I was super mm -hmm. lucky that Brian Mitchell and Mick Morris and Stacey Boisel, uh, Audio Motion. Um, well, they're not there anymore, but, um, but Brian has handed over to Sarah Whiting, who, who runs Audio Motion now. But I have them to thank for my career. Uh, I really do. And um, they took a chance on me, then they took another chance on me, another chance on me, another chance on me. And they just gave me all this amazing work and took so and they had a lot of support and love. And then I worked at the Imaginarium, then I worked at Centroid, and then I just started working throughout the whole of England with different companies. And then I started traveling abroad for work. I worked in America now, Japan, South Africa, across the whole of Europe. It's been this incredible gift, and I've been so grateful and fortunate 
to still so many people taking a risk on me and, and giving me work and taking a chance on me. So that's how I got into it, yeah. I mean, you seem like a really grateful and humble guy. You have no idea how big my ego is. Yeah, thank you, no, I appreciate that. I think gratitude is important. I think gratitude, regardless of what you do in life, um, is very, very, very important because I think it's a, it's a good way of being a watchman or watch, sorry, watch person um, <laughs> over your, your humility and keeping your ego in check and not having a life of um, expectation, yeah. you know, not, not being entitled. Like life is not fair. People can be fair if they choose to be. Life isn't fair and there's no written rule that says it should be. So, you know, people are lucky because they work hard to get ready to be lucky. Luck is the residue of design, right? Mm -hmm. So if you work hard, you may not work out, it may work out, who knows? but at least you're ready for the opportunity. But then if you take the opportunity, you take the job, you know, you get paid for it as well, then you have gotta do it honor and you have to do it service. Otherwise it's it's really disrespectful, I think. Yeah. Especially to people that aren't working, that don't get the opportunities. It's not fair because I think you have to stay humble and grounded and, uh, and you have to remember why you're doing this job. It's not for fame or recognition. You know, I love the fact that people know my work and they come up to me, they, they take the time to say hi to me. I always try and take the time to say back, I hope. Um, <laughs> But it's, it's a, it's a, it changed my life, this work, and it gave me a better life and allowed me to be a fulfilled creative artist. So yeah, humility and gratitude, yeah, for sure. I mean, from where where you started to where you are now, you've been mm. part of like, some amazing games, like uh, yeah. Resident Evil Village recently. Yeah, it's uh, true. Yeah. And my personal favorite is like Detroit Becoming Human. Oh, cool, okay, yeah, yeah I like that game a lot. So uh, I was gonna ask, like, you like, uh, from what I see, you like leaning into the darker aspects of um, these characters. That's not my choice, man. I get cast. So um, I don't go, is that your I will take that role. No, it's yeah. not, you, don't, you don't get to pick. It's yeah. more like, what do they see you as? What do you, do you, do you feel like um, you get typecast as that then? Like, as no, not really. No, I mean, in games, I don't get typecasted so much because I've played so many different types of people. Mm. I don't play villains. Yeah. Um, I play people that are sometimes unshackled by moral compunction. Mm. I play people that are highly motivated and and don't aren't like restrained by the hero yeah. need to be a good person, right? So I don't play villains. I play people that have uh, you know the wants and needs and the obstacles they face. I, if you play a villain as an actor, you're you're judging a character, yeah. which you can't do as an actor. Mm. That's for the audience to decide whether my character is a villain or not. Yeah. And obviously they do bad things, you know, blah blah blah. But I can't play that. I just have to play, well, this person's interesting and amazing and what makes them uh, do the things that they do, whether they're morally wrong or not. It's like, I can't, I, I just look at the, the character I'm playing. Also, you love your characters. Yeah. So you end up like, you know, you don't judge them. You want to play and honor their story. And if they are supposed to be the bad guy in other people's point, then great, play the bad guy, but don't play it as a bad guy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I so I don't, I also don't get choice, you know, I, mm -hmm. I audition. And, and if I'm lucky enough to get the audition, then great, I'll play it, you know? <laughs> I mean, do you have a, a favorite character uh, that you like to play? No, I don't have a favorite character. I've got like 20 favorite characters. <laughs> yeah, I've got, I mean, I'm, each one of them is, has a real meaning to me. Uh -huh. um, and I'm, I'm appreciate the fact I got to play them. So I don't have a favorite job or a favorite studio or a favorite thing. Yeah. I've been very lucky to be surrounded by really awesome human beings mm -hmm. that make great games and have a good time and allow me to do my work and take a chance on me. So I don't really have a favorite, no, not really. I mean, so I know you Twitch stream occasionally. Yeah, a little so. bit, yeah, a little bit. Um, I'm not a professional streamer, I just yeah. do it for kicks. Yeah. Um, so when chat like uh, asks you to like voice a character or something, sure. uh, do you ever feel like they're like um, prodding you with a stick, like um, nope. voice? Nope. Ah. So do you just enjoy like this? Cause I, I've seen uh, your clips of like, you like voicing, um, was it a, st uh, a stereo? Astarian. Astarian from uh, Baldur's Gate mm -hmm. and um, Heisenberg and all that. Uh, Hello, my name's Astarian. <laughs> it's not you, darling, it's me. I have standards. It's like, yeah, it's great, it's fun. I, I'm an entertainer, that's mm. my job. My private life is private, but yeah. my public working life is very public. I'm there to entertain people. We play heroes, we play yeah. scientists, we play doctors. We are not doctors, yeah. heroes and scientists. We're entertainers. Mm -hmm. So. If I'm in a public forum and the show, because we, the Twitch stuff that we do, I do with Tom DeVille, yeah. who is an amazing writer with Marvel and Hannibal. He's got some mm -hmm. films coming out, some amazing TV stuff. He's an incredible writer. But he and I decided to start this, because we're both gamers as well. Yeah. But he and I wanted to start something to, to be able to reach out and create 
a nice community for people. Well, we didn't actually want to create community, they did it themselves. <laughs> but it was a really nice thing during the pandemic to stay creative, to talk about the stuff that we love and to share it with people. So that's, for me, that's like a comedy show. We, <laughs> we, we do it as a comedy show, right? Um, that's like my public work. Yeah. Um, so I don't mind if people want to ask me, can you do this, do that? Sure, man, I'm an entertainer. That's yeah. my job, you know? Um, so with like aspects of um, you being an entertainer and stuff, mm. I know um, you're currently a dungeon master for uh, like your I like, used to, uh, yeah, Vagabond. We do, yeah, we do a thing called Vagabond Chronicles, yeah. which is Warhammer first edition with some augmented rules. Mm -hmm. It's really fun. We've done about uh, 50 episodes. Yeah. yeah. It's really fun. I was going to ask, um, so with the creativity that you... Um, like have to experience as a motion, uh, like as an actor, as a performer, yeah. as an antenna. Do you ever uh, attribute that to your campaigns and stuff? No, it's, uh, I'm not sure if I know what you mean, but all of this bleeds into the fact that I'm a storyteller. Yeah. My job is actually, if you want to encompass everything, directing, producing, acting, blah, 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 I'm a storyteller. Yeah. Like many other people that want to tell stories, directors, actors, of which there are many. <laughs> um, we're all storytellers, storytellers. Yeah. it's fun. Um, the fact that I get to Games Master, is, it's useful that I'm also a professional storyteller because it means I can really push the boat out on some yeah. of the characters that we create and have a bit of fun. Um, but I was I was doing this when I was a kid. I'm a geek. I'm like a, <laughs> I was a geek before it was cool. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I was like one of those kids uh, back in the day. Mm. Uh, I mean, so to you, what does like being a storyteller and storytelling mean like to you, I guess? Storytelling for human beings is just the exploration, observation of what it is to be human. Mm -hmm. That's it. I mean, we amorphize alien creatures to have human-like qualities, or at least yeah. be have a strand of them to be identifiable as something that we can relate to. But really, all stories that we create is about exploring the human experience. That's it. It's very simple. Yeah. I mean, uh, in terms of like st stories, um, mm -hmm. so. Tattoos are a very important way to tell stories. Yeah, sure. and I know you have like several tattoos on you. I do. Um, I'm not going to talk about them. Oh, you can't talk about them. I don't want to. Oh, okay, uh, that's private. fair enough. Yeah, they all have private meaning. Oh, okay. So again, I don't really talk about my private life. The that's reason fair being, enough. no, there's a specific reason. Well, two reasons. One, I don't make money from my private life. Yeah, um, I have a daughter. People know that, but she's not in the public eye. Yeah, she's protected. Secondly, I want people to know more about my characters than they do about me. Yeah. So I'm quite public. I do a lot of interviews and press, which I'm very grateful for. I do Twitch streaming as well. But I don't want people to be thinking when they see a character of mine yeah. that I'm lucky enough to play, that they know so much information about me that they're forgetting what's on the screen. Mm. Simple reason, nobody's ever written a story about Neil Newborn, and they shouldn't. It's really boring. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I would say this boring. It's fucking Can you imagine playing a computer game? Neil gets up to breakfast. He uh, did it take the toast today? You know, it's, it's fucking dull. So I want people to know more about my characters than they do about who I am and what yeah. I like. And there are information out there. And we live in a um, in a, an internet-driven age. Everything's driven by information and data. And it's difficult to keep your life off the internet. Yeah. So I'm trying my best to keep myself a blank canvas so that when people play the game, they may not even recognize that it's me. That's, yeah. that, that's a, actually a compliment. So I had the thing in Detroit, funnily enough, where I played two characters. Where I yeah. played Kamsky and I played Gavin Reed. And when it came out, nobody realized I was Gavin Reed for ages and ages <laughs> and ages, which for me was like awesome compliment. It was like fucking great. Nobody knows who I am. Because that way I'm a blank canvas. I get to be a character actor mm -hmm. and people get to enjoy the character without the hangups of, oh, the person. And if they're interested in who played it, great. That's cool. You know, yeah. I do press interviews and stuff. It's really <laughs> interesting. Um, but I really want them just to focus on the character, not me, not mine. That's fair enough. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I completely get what you mean with that. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess, By the way, tattoos should always have meaning, like yeah. Bart Simpson on your arm, you may come to regret in 20 years' time. Yeah. You know I mean? So for me, tattoos are personal mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> uh, There's some cool shit there. Oh, know. yeah. We can talk about it after the interview if you want. After the interview, it's yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, anyway, just to loop it back around to us being Loop it back side. around, no, let's go. All right. Uh, oh, real fucking serious there, isn't it? Good. <laughs> <laughs> no, because so we're insomnia. It's like a very, it's a gaming convention, very much uh, esports as a LAN. Yeah. Do you follow any esports at all? Um, I had somebody describe what an esport was to me about five, six years ago. Oh, yeah. So, no. Oh. <laughs> That's a big no. Um, I, the main reason is I just don't have time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I box rinse like most people on the planet, like streaming stuff. Yeah. If I want to watch a TV series, I have to destroy it in like a day or two. I just, I'm very grateful. I work all the time and I don't have the time for that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm interested in the concept of it. And I dig the fact that so many people are 
involved in it and it's a really cool thing for people to watch and everything. I just don't have the time to actually sit down and watch it. Yeah. Is, is there a game that you would, like if you had enough free time, you would want to get into? I play games sometimes. Oh. I mean, I, I'm a gamer still, I still play. Um, there are lots of games that are coming up that I'm really excited about. The one that I'm really excited to play in its entirety when it's finished is Baldur's Gate 3, oh, which yeah. I'm actually in, but it's just an amazing, amazing game to play. Okay. So I'm really looking forward to actually playing that game. So can you tell us about uh, the game you performance directed, uh, Deliver Us to Mars? Yeah, please? sure. I was very fortunate to be interviewed and in, in, um, by Kioken Games, who did Deliver Us the Moon, uh, which is an amazing sleep, like came out of nowhere, an amazing game, uh, indie game. And they, with Frontier Development, um, scaled up quite dramatically for the next game in the series, which is Deliver Us Mars. And I met Kioken and Rainer, who's the narrative director there, um, interviewed me and asked me to come on board as a performance director to work with them specifically in performance capture. So uh, very luckily we worked with uh, a great crew at Molinaire, uh, which was like sort of run by the Centroid crew actually. And uh, I helped out a little bit in the casting of finding the right people as well. And it was great. It, it was an amazing game. I was also invited to play one of the supporting leads, oh, yeah. uh, one of the characters called Isaac Johansson, which is uh, Isaac Johansson, which is great. And I got to work with my old uh, my old colleague uh, Nicole Tompkins, which is great. Elise Chapel, who's absolutely stunning. It's her first game. She's a TV actor, um, but she's absolutely incredible in it. Uh, Bryony Tibbetts in it. Louisa Guerrero plays uh, another character in there, <laughs> and also Danny Ashop, who's also his first game as well. And it was just a fucking awesome experience. <laughs> we did two weeks, two and a half weeks of shooting. It was very tight shoot, a huge amount of content into it. And we really left our blood, sweat and tears on the floor. And I think it's gonna be a wonderful narrative experience. It's not like a multi-branching linear thing. It's, it's, it's sorry, multi-branching story. It's a linear experience. It's like, it's like an active film and you're helping the main protagonist along her journey. But I really think people are gonna dig it and it looks absolutely stunning. And I know that the performances were absolutely still. I'm so proud of everybody. And quickly, yeah. before we run out of time, uh, yeah. can you just tell us uh, about the new Resident Evil DLC that's coming out? Sure, so as well as the Baldur's Gate 3, which is coming out next year, uh, we hope. Um, <laughs> I've also lucky enough to have another bite of the cherry of Resident Evil Village. So Heisenberg's back, baby! Uh, we're gonna do, it's Winter's Expansion, which I think is public now. It's gonna be released in October to, uh, 22. Um, I'm not sure the date though, so you'll have to check yeah, that sure, one, man. Sure. Um, but it's, yeah, it's really fun. We, we did this secretly in the pandemic. We did all the DLC um, remotely, um, all the, the voiceover for that, because obviously I was then, yeah. I came back from Japan, I was doing an animated film in Japan, had to rush straight back to the UK. And then they, about two or three months after the pandemic hit everybody, uh, they said, we want to do some, and we want to do DLC. So I was like, cool, man, let's do it. So we, we recorded it. I have a home studio, thank God. So we recorded it remotely. It was so much fun. It's really silly. Um, it's like a mercenaries uh, thing. So you get to, but this time you get to play Heisenberg oh, and you can play cool. Lady D as fucking wild. Yeah, it's really fun. So you get to be Heisenberg kicking the shit out of everybody. <laughs> Which I think we can all enjoy, right? Uh, got some boulder punching assholes and let's see what you're really made of, all right? So yeah, it was really fun. It's really great. So yeah. thank you very much uh, for the interview today. You're um, welcome, sir. Welcome. So Esports News uh, UK, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, yeah. Thank you to ESI and uh, Aegon uh, by AOC for helping us get to Insomnia 69 and having this interview with Neil Newborn. Let's see what you're really made of, because it's showtime!